Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Jono. I want to give you an update on Archean. If you're not familiar with this project, it is a VR world building project where we can make a bunch of objects and use a bunch of tools to manipulate them, as well as some kind of meta building tools like making walls and extruding those, making hallways, that kind of thing, uh, as well as sort of nonsensical 3D brushing, but it's fun, so why not also provide that? So you got that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, in a nutshell, it's kind of a in VR level editor, or I try to think of it like Photoshop for VR. It's kind of how I look at it. Uh, anyway, what I want to show you today is a few different things. Um, primarily is kind of a visual programming thing I'm working on for adding logic into the world while you're in VR. So I'll show you some examples of that and then uh, it actually in action, how, how it is set up, as well as uh, some new art since the last video I put out. And this build is almost exactly the one that I was using for a demo at Boston VR last week. So I have some kind of hints and tool tips in here which really help people get kind of accustomed to the project. And I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but still the challenge of like making it understandable to people in a little five minute demo has been super helpful in terms of just like explaining the tools and stuff. So I'll show, I'll show more of that. But if you saw the last video, I was talking in that one about kind of using teleport nodes to do level design and kind of switching between different rooms. And you'll see that in this one, I'm actually trying a different technique of doing some non-Euclidean locomotion here. So you saw that as I walked around the corner, I'm now in a totally different space than I was before. If I come back, I, I do not come back the way I came. I come back into a different little room here. Uh, and here I also have a physics object. I can pick this rock up. Uh, I can also kind of lasso it at a distance. And that's just some stuff that I've built, but I am planning to integrate Newton VR, a open source Vive physics library. So this will all get better better then. Um, whoops, as you'll see here, drop the rock on the button and the door opens. Hey, we got some dynamic objects in here. This is the first example of the kind of logic building in the world. Uh, and you'll see some more kind of invisible, more programmatic examples and less, less portally as we go along. Got buttons, jam it, different things happen. In this case, boom, it changes the world again. Obviously, I could also open a door or something. So here's the first of these little guys I was looking for, and that one also changes the world, changes the room, and brings me back here. I know on, on screen there that didn't fade out and back in, but for me that did a fade, uh, so that wasn't as jarring as it looked there. And then if I go over this way, there's, there's another of those uh, statues. But I'm actually going to, yeah, switch into creative mode here, and you'll see some crazy stuff going on. So this is sort of the, the programmatic stuff that I was talking about. And here we have these zones, and those are the trigger zones that are activating the non-Euclidean switch. So when I stick my head through that box, it's gonna change the room here. And it's actually tied to this object here is a room switcher. I'll show an example of that shortly. And then we've got just a whole bunch of logic going on here. Um, here I'm checking some variables that I had set earlier uh, in, the, in the scenes where I had put the little statues down, they had a variable setter, and here I'm checking those variables, and then if they are activated, some, some different things will happen. I'll, I have a timer node, and then I'll switch to a different level. Uh, so I didn't run through the whole example there, but this is kind of what it looks like. And this one here is, uh, this is checking a variable, which is if I've found all the statues, then I'm gonna change the text, which is this lorem to ipsum node you see. So I'm actually gonna clear the level um, there we go. Kind of losing some track in here if I have to change my batteries. And I'll show you how this works from ground up. And yeah, first off here I have tool tips which are, which are new, so I actually get some instruction on how to do stuff, which is something that's been missing for a while. But anyway, let's build some stuff. Uh, so here is a button like you saw earlier, and here's a door, where we're tracking. And what I can do here is anything that sends action, like a button, for example, will have this, what I'm calling a plug, on top of it that I can pick up and it makes this little line. And anything that receives action, like a door, for example, has what I'm calling a port. You see this is obviously programmer art, cube, and a sphere, but I can stick the plug into the port and now they're connected. And now if I 
touch it, boom, door opens. So that's that's the super basic version. Let's get these out of my way for a second. Um, yeah, and you saw the example earlier where I had just use a different kind of door here for fun and a rock. And if I switch into play mode here, not adventure mode, then like you saw, I can pick up the rock and, oh, wait, I forgot to connect them. Yeah, I have to remember to plug the button into the door it's controlling. Oh, and I can also have it control multiple things. So I can say that button is gonna control both of these doors and just show off here it actually like keeps the lines where they should be and everything so that's nice anyway back to adventure so again I can pick up my stone drop it on the button both doors open huzzah great all right so now to show some kind of less literal uh, more invisible logic stuff more programmatic logic stuff uh, I'll set up how I was doing in the, the scene you saw earlier where I picked up the statues and then they would uh, change the scene and also the statue chest in one of the scenes would like fill up with the statues that I had collected. So it was checking a variable. The way I do that is here I have a statue to pick up and this is a variable checking node. And again, I'll plug this uh, plug into this port. So it'll set a variable when I pick up the statue. Uh, and then let's just give this a little bit of scenery here so we can like really see that the scene has changed. Yeah, so just a couple of items here. And I'll save this scene and rename it to the current time, which is just a useful little thing. Yeah, there's, there's this scene. Uh, and now in this scene, I will have a this, stop shaking. This is a variable checking node and I'll connect it to the door. Love me my doors. So I'll say if the variable has been set, then send the command to open the door. And again, I'll just kind of throw a couple of objects. The bench, hey. Throw a couple of objects around the scene here so we can really see that it has changed. Nice, okay. Um, and now I'll save this one, rename this scene and save it, yep. So now I got both of those scenes. Jump back into the first one here and I'll say when I, yeah, when I pick up the statue, set the variable and then also, now that we have somewhere to go, So yeah, when I pick them up, it'll set a variable and then also uh, enact this scene changing node and I'll set it to be the other scene. And even though you won't be able to see this on screen, I'm gonna turn the fade on. So for me, it'll, it'll fade between the two scenes. I'll save that. And if all, if all went according to plan, I should be able to pick this guy up. And here I am and the door opens. Boom. So if I didn't have that variable setting, then the door wouldn't open. And now I'm a giant. Hooray for being a giant. What's up, tree? So uh, obviously what, what you saw there, I kind of have just one variable that I can set and check. Um, and it does have support for multiple variables. You can actually have to check multiple variables at once. So I can have like a bunch of nodes and if all of the variables have been set, then the door will open and that sort of thing. Um, but that that right now, you have to set some stuff up outside of VR, um, which is too bad, obviously. I want everything to be set in VR. So I won't even show it right now until I have an interface for it. Uh, and just to kind of give you a taste of where else this is going, you've seen a bunch of these now. I also have a timer node so you can delay things from happening. Here is, uh, oops, there we go, sorry, uh, a button node. So you can actually start to build interface and connect that button to other actions. This one looks like nothing right now, but that is the text block I was using earlier. 
And again, for the button in the text block, actually anything that involves setting a piece of text, currently I don't have a way to do that in the app, uh, so you have to do that in the level save file, which is not ideal, but it works. And again, I'll put out a future video where I'll show how you can actually set these once I have like a virtual keyboard in here. This is the trigger that you saw earlier, so if I walk into the trigger, then something will happen, like you know, probably changing the level or opening a door or any other action we might want to take. And what else do we have? This one can activate nodes. This one can destroy objects, uh, which is useful sometimes. This one will change text, so it'll, when I actually have text in here, I can set it to change when something happens. Uh, and that one's super arbitrary. So anyway, those are a bunch of the nodes that I've been working on. Uh, and with this, you can actually start to do some pretty cool, pretty powerful stuff. And yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited to keep building this system out. And you know, this project for, for a while has been about making environments, making 3D scenes to be in. And I'm excited that now with this, this new tool set coming in, you know, it's not just about static scenes anymore. Now you can really do interactive stuff and actually kind of do some, you know, do some storytelling, actually have a narrative, uh, actually be able to make dynamic scenes. So I'm really excited about that. And yeah, that's about it for today. So hope you enjoyed the update. Let me know if you got any thoughts. See you soon.